good afternoon, More Medic One. Today we're working on an Echo. It's a PB250. Uh, this unit's several years old, uh, but it came in for a fuel leak. As you can tell, it's all wet here around the gas tank, the fuel tank. I have had to replace a couple gas tanks on these, but I think if we'll look at this closely, and I'm going to show you guys where it's leaking, and that way that uh, you don't, you know, when we tilt this blower this away, you can tell that it drips fuel. So, my first thought was, hey, let's look at the fuel tank grommet. And then I was like, well, you know, it's pliable, it looks good, but it's leaking fuel out of the fuel tank vent line. And if you look, that line is split where this fuel vent is. See, uh, <laughs> I'm just able to just pull that out of there. So it's obvious, obvious leak. But once we get it repaired, I'm going to show you how to uh, pump this up, pressure it up, and actually check for a leak. I'm going to hit this, hit the area with just a little brake clean, get it all cleaned up and nice looking. Get all the old residual fuel and oil. Got me a little catch underneath there. So let's go ahead and blow it off. Let's go ahead and grab this vent line, as you can tell. It doesn't go down in there very far, just enough to clear the, uh, the fuel line grommet and stick down in the tank maybe a half inch. It doesn't have to go in there far. So we can actually test this uh, vent valve. Basically what you want to do, is I can prove to you that it's working, is that it, you should be able to draw a vacuum, and I'm going to use my lips. But you should not be able to pressure it up. It should hold pressure and hold. So as we can tell here on the gauge, that uh, 0 0.1 MPAs, that gives me a little graph on the back, 0 0.1 is about 15 psi so let's pump it up to 15 roughly a little more and it should hold for several minutes it's I mean it's not gonna just it, it's it's just a rubber duck bill valve in there and I don't expect it to sit there and hold for hours and hours but if it'll hold for a minute or two you're good to go so let's go ahead and get our new piece of fuel line like I said you don't need a whole bunch but we're just going to take and we're going to feather that edge and we're going to make a point out of it so whenever we go to install it, it just makes it that much easier. So just reach down in here with your curved hemostats. In this case, I'm going to be using my uh, curved uh, needle nose. And we're just going to grab that line and we're going to push straight down. See it move? So we're down in there, but however, I am going to go ahead and pull me enough through there so that I can trim it off. As you can tell, I'm going to have several inches down in there, so let's go ahead and get it out. Let's go ahead and snip your tag end flush. And then we're going to pull it back through just enough keep pulling just a little bit more to where it's just about equal with the return line there we go and the, that's plenty so we've got quite a bit of line left over that's okay we can trim it off with our dikes. All right, so for the fuel system pressure test, what we're going to do, this is the fuel line for the vent valve. We're going to 
basically connect our thumb pump to this line we're going to put the fuel cap on it and uh, what you want to do you want at least a half a tank of gas I would recommend just go ahead and filling it up that way you don't have as many pumps because all the surface uh, the volume is taken up by the fuel plus it makes it easy to uh, see if it's got a leak when it's full of gas Okay, so basically what we're testing is the integrity of the fuel tank. We're testing the O-ring or the, uh, the seal on the gas cap. We're testing the grommets and the fuel lines where they go through the fuel tank. We are testing the lines going to the carburetor. And we are testing the needle and seat in the carburetor itself. So there is a multitude of things you can check by doing this one test right here. Now, what we don't want, what you don't want to do, is overpressure it because what's going to happen is going to uh, the needle inside the carburetor is going to pop off, and then you have a flooded situation. You don't want to do that. So, 0 0.05, I'm going to start pumping it, and it would take considerably less pumps if your fuel tank was full. But 0 0.05 is about seven, six to seven psi. So you don't want to go much over that. But as you can tell, I'm pumping, pumping, pumping. And guys, I've had a lot of questions about my thumb pump and I can't find one. This came in my Echo troubleshooting kit that I bought 20 years ago and it's still going good. But uh, I, I think you can get the Echo kit still. I'll uh, try to link it product description maybe a link below but it's as you can tell the pump has got a, a little double furled to where you can hook up uh, a multitude of different fuel lines it's cone shaped so it just slips up on there and I can sit here and talk all day about this but uh, as you can tell our fuel system is not leaking definitely air so let's go ahead and tilt it back and we'll just let it sit there for a few minutes alright it's been several minutes and as you can tell we have not moved one inch so let's go ahead and crack the gas cap to relieve the pressure so we'll go ahead and get the vent valve reinstalled let's go ahead and get it pushed up on the fuel line and it doesn't have a specific home it just kind of just just dangles in there alrighty guys we got the little echo blower going once more and uh, hey if this helped you out give me a thumbs up and then smash that subscribe button and while you're doing that just right to the right of it, it's a little bell uh, hit that bell and you'll get all my new videos well y'all have a good rest of y'all's day and we'll see you on the next one have a good one more medic one